avenged a couple of regular season losses, beating James Madison and George Mason. They haven't allowed a goal yet in this tournament. American U, on the other hand, the top seed, rolled past East Carolina and then beat last year's champion, the Tribe. Happy birthday, Mom. This video is for you to say happy birthday. Um, some of the sh the recordings you'll see, we just got the camera, so we're playing with the camera most of the time, but we just wanted you to see Brianna. Let's talk about some of the great players in this game for VCU, the CAA Rookie of the Year, Ricardo Capilla. Yes, Ricardo is a very young player for VCU, but he has proven that he's definitely one of their better players. He's come up with some big goals throughout the season and also throughout the CAA tournament, as we've seen in the quarterfinals and the semifinals of the tournament. From American University, three-time first-team CAA standout, Scott Pearson. Yeah, Scott Pearson is a very competitive player, has proved that he is definitely uh, the leading player for American University. He's scored some big goals also for American uh, and the Hill definitely uh, want to score today to try to get American on the scoreboard. Well, speaking of scoring, neither of these teams scored when they met during the regular season. They battled to a nothing-nothing tie. Something has to give today. It's VCU versus American U, the CAA Men's Soccer Championship. The action begins when we come back. Soccer apparel and equipment. The power behind the game. A woman goes to her personal trainer and says, Hey, I'm a little sluggish. What do I do? Get a Katera, said the trainer. So they put it through a workout. Climb a few hills, pass a truck, and stop on a mine. The more she drives it, the more she likes it. Katera does my heart good, says the woman. I think I'll buy one. Exercise your prerogative, said the trainer. Katera, it's the caddy to Ziggs. See your Central Virginia authorized Cadillac Katera dealers, the luxury leaders. Virginia is one of the most beautiful states in the country. The rivers, the valleys, the mountains, and the trees go on forever and so does our wireless phone coverage the GTE super system it covers as much of Virginia as you do come into a GTE location near you switch today and we'll cover your last two cellular phone bills today's game on HTS is brought to you by Kellogg's title sponsor of the 1997 CAA soccer championship Back at Reeves Field on the campus of American University, Bob Black along with Richie Williams and our entire HTS crew. We're getting set for the CAA Men's Soccer Championship. Two first-time participants, the American U Eagles, 15-3-3, and, and the VCU Rams also, 15-3-3. and three. Both schools looking for their first ever Colonial Athletic Association. Championship. Both feel pretty secure that they're headed to the NCAA tournament no matter what happens today. Let's check your starting lineups for this afternoon's match. First of all, for the Rams of VCU. CU. Headed up, Richie, by their outstanding goaltender, first team all CAA, Jim Larkin. Yes, Jim is proven he's a top quality goalkeeper in the CAA. He's a leader for VCU, and uh, they look to him to have a good showing today to keep him in the ballgame. 0.87 goals against average for the senior Canadian born. He'll feel right at home today, Jim Larkin. The American University Eagles, on the other hand, have won six in a row. They're ranked as high as number six in the nation. Here's their starting lineup, and let's talk some defense for them, but not necessarily the goalkeeper, Richie. Avery John, the senior out of Trinidad. Yeah, one of the top defenders in the league, has proven that he's a quality player, he's played for Trinidad's national team, and uh, he, he has a, he's had a great season, and uh, hopefully he'll, he'll play well here today. 
So there are the players who will decide this game on the field. How about the coaches who will prowl the sidelines? Tim O'Sullivan in his third year at VCU, 29-23 and 8, came over from crosstown rival Richmond to guide the fortunes of the Rams soccer program. And the CAA Coach of the Year, American University's Bob Jenkins, in his sixth year, 60 wins, 53 losses, nine ties. Richie, very familiar with him. He's a former assistant at UVA when, when you were playing there, right? Yeah, Bob's a quality uh, person and also a quality coach. He's coached me uh, for about three seasons at the University of Virginia, and he's come up to American and had some times the first couple seasons, but has, uh, has proven that he's a quality coach. All right, just about set to go. Here are the men who will officiate this afternoon's match for a CAA soccer championship. As we said, one of these schools will experience their first ever Colonial Athletic Association title. And here we go, we're underway. During the regular season, these teams tied nothing, nothing. And both are 15, three and three. So something's gotta give here today. VCU is in the black uniform tops with the white pants. And American U in the white and blue tops, white on the front, blue on the black, and uh, the blue shorts. And uh, Richie, kind of like uh, last week with the women, we'll see who becomes the aggressor early on, which could be a, a real factor in a game like this. Definitely. I think American has a little bit of advantage at the beginning. They're playing at home. They're a little familiar with the, the surroundings. So I, I, see, I see them coming out and uh, playing a little bit stronger at the beginning of the game. There's the series. These teams meeting for just the fourth ever. And as you saw back on the 27th of September, they tied nothing, nothing. It's been quite a tournament run for VCU. They've already avenged losses to two teams that they had not fared well against, James Madison and George Mason. Now they're trying to beat a team today they have never beat. So the theme for VCU has kind of been revenge this week. As Tim O'Sullivan said before the game, uh, they never defeated any of the, the uh, teams that they played in the tournament. They're going to go out here and try to give a strong showing today and uh, prove that they are a quality team in the CAA. There's their big-time scorer, Ricardo Capilla, who we talked about on the uh, open, on the pregame, the second-team All-CAA standout, the Rookie of the Year in the CAA number 11 for VCU. And you know that uh, American will be trying to mark him as tightly as possible this afternoon. Guillermo Henriquez to kick from the near sideline for the Rams here in half number one just underway Lorenz Baumgartner on the left flank loses it and here come the American U Eagles Trevor Ellis their fine midfielder across the midfield line and AU on the attack Dwayne Bergeron with the interception for the Rams same thing as we talked in the, uh, the women's CAA final. Both teams very excited, uh, probably a little bit nervous uh, in this final game. So it's going to take a little while to settle down to get the, the game underway. And I think once it does, you're going to see a very entertaining and attack-oriented game. And their first opportunity in on goal, and Jim Larkin smothers it up against the far post for VCU. Larkin, the 6'3 senior, as we said, he might be familiar with these field conditions and weather conditions out of Scarborough, Ontario. And we've got the... Kind of the Canadian breeze blowing today. The field actually looks like it's held up uh, very well considering the weather. Uh, they moved the uh, semifinals over to RFK Stadium just so they'd have a, a very nice field here in the final, and it definitely looks playable. Yeah, that's right. American, you played the quarterfinal game, beat East Carolina 4 to nothing, and then the semifinals were shifted to RFK Stadium to kind of preserve this field, and uh, that's worked pretty well. The field in pretty good shape. Todd Miller. The fine second team all CAA defender for American U. Leaves it for Steven Franski and back in front of the box. And the Eagles now will look to make an attack going right to left here in the first half. American stretching the field out very nicely. Uh, playing in a 4-4-2. Uh, um, the ball around as much as possible and get a flow to the game going. Trevor Spencer comes up with it and loses it for VCU. And back come the Eagles on the attack. Trying to, as Richie said, set something up. Bob Brennan, freshman defenseman. And back to midfield, that's Avery John, who uh, Richie talked about earlier, the senior out of Trinidad, member of the Trinidad national team. Strong player, very talented player. As the central, in the central defense, uh, Stephen Fransky. Capilla just kicks it in on goal. Jeff Angelucci, the goaltender for American Youth, touching the ball for the first time. Miller on the left flank to on Antonio Otero, first team all CAA standout.
11 assists this year. Number one in the CAA, Otero for American U. He's got the ball at midfield. American with most of the play right now. VCU is dropping back uh, into their own half of the field and letting American basically set up and uh, come at them a little bit. Well, the Eagles have been red hot. They are 13-1-2 in their last 16 games, right? 13 plus 1 plus 2 would be 16. And Bob Jenkins has really done a great job, Rich, especially the last two years. As you mentioned, kind of struggled early when he took over the program and has really built this thing up into a consistent winner. Yeah, I think he came into a program that was having was on some tough times, and uh, Bob had some tough to begin with, but he's really turned the, the program around. Uh, last year they came on and were pretty successful, and uh, they showed this year they're definitely one of the top teams in the country. So he's shown that he's a quality coach and he has a quality team. Todd Miller on the left flank for Angel Lanches. Right over here in front of the VCU bench. Lanches had a goal in the quarterfinal victory over East Carolina. That was uh, really an easy performance for AU. Scott Weber had a couple of the goals and was dominated that first game and looked like they were going to dominate the William and Mary game. They jumped ahead and then the Tribe came back and made it a one goal game. Yeah, they got three early goals in the first half and uh, Tribe came back, scored two goals in the second half. Sometimes uh, teams uh, relax a little bit when they have a lead like that, but lucky they held on, they held on for the win. Trevor Ellis in the far corner for the Eagles. Will we look for Scott Pearson who had the ball a moment ago? That's Derek Roberts. And Roberts looking for Scott Weber, who's two goals against East Carolina. And again, the play has been an American's offensive third of the field here in the first five, six minutes of the match. VCU's strongest point is probably definitely their defense, so they've shown here that they're, they're staying together and playing some good defense and all they're trying to counterattack as they're doing here. Boy, as if on cue, Capilla makes the steal, comes up with it and comes back down into the offensive end for VCU. We talk about Capilla as an offensive player, Richie, but that was a real good defensive play. Oh, uh, definitely. He's a, good, he's a good player, but he's not sure that he's a very good defensive player, making a nice uh, tackle uh, in his, uh, his defensive end. Capilla has scored all of the goals in the tournament in addition to those numbers you see on the screen but he's got all three of ECU's goals a one nothing victory over JMU and then the uh, two nil victory over George Mason in the semifinals Lorenz Baumgartner to take the kick in on goal and the Rams put the first tally on the board John Moffitt the second team all CAA standout senior hits the back of the net for the VCU Rams yeah, that was a nice play but from Baumgartner over to over to Moffitt and uh, a great finish into the goal for uh, VCU for a one nothing lead. That's definitely got to uh, make them feel good, especially being a defensive uh, team getting an early goal like that. Look how quickly this comes off the foot of Baumgartner. And there's Moffitt in a crowd. Yeah, it looked like there was plenty of American University uh, players uh, around the ball, but no one uh, attacked the ball, and uh, he simple, uh, made a simple uh, almost pass right into the goal. In great. fact, there were so many Eagles there, I'm not quite sure how Moffitt even saw the ball. Yeah, it was a great finish. Uh, a great, uh, It's a great uh, score for uh, VCU here early on. And how about that? American U had uh, dominated the first six, seven minutes at the other end of the field. The Rams get one opportunity, and they cash in. So VCU takes the early advantage here in the first eight minutes of half number one. You concentrate all game. You can't be uh, a little bit lackadaisical as America was on that. As you said, they had most of the play, and uh, one uh, free kick uh, is in the back of the net. And again, the same pattern holding. This is Scott Weber with a high arcing kick to the left of the goal and over the end line. Angel Montes, the junior out of Spain. Three goals, six assists this season for American U. And now we'll get a look at uh, Jim Larkin as he kicks it out. Three-time All-CAA standout. And what did uh, Tim O'Sullivan say when we asked about him before the game? He said he's not outstanding in any area, but he's very good in all areas. Yeah, he's very consistent. He's shown that throughout the year. He also said that he's a very good leader uh, and organizer. He uh, makes sure nobody's out of position, uh, and he's very positive in the back, supporting his players throughout the game. Again, American U trying to come on the attack as Brennan kicks it into the offensive half of the field, looking for Derek Roberts. Job by Henriquez to knock it away and back to midfield, and Capi gets hit hard right at the line and as you can see he is not moving Avery John coming up and making uh, committing the foul uh, going up for a head ball and uh, I think Avery John's going to be around Capia most of the game as you can see here on the replay 
Avery John, a very strong player, just comes out from behind and uh, knocks him in the back. Yeah, he got him right in the small of the back. Not so sure if the, the, the player hitting player was as hard as when Capilla hit the ground. I don't know that his, his back or neck or head didn't actually bang right off of the turf. Looks like he's going to be all right, though. Just a little bit shaken up, a little bit woozy. He does look a, a little bit dazed. And he's kind of, as you saw, kind of rubbing the back of the neck as if maybe that's what took the brunt of the collision a moment ago. And Tim O'Sullivan will escort him off temporarily. Oh, sure. I think we'll see him again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, think he's so. that shaken up. Yeah. I think he'll get a few minutes to kind of catch his breath and come back. Let's see if we can take one more look at it and see where the majority of the, the brunt of the, the injury occurs. The ball's just played up to the front, and uh, he's just slammed in his back. I think his neck actually snapped back. And uh, Probably on the collision, though. You're right. I think the, the neck kind of snapped back a little bit. and. To Sullivan now a little strategy session for Ricardo, and I would imagine you'll see him back in the match very soon. And the Rams on the attack again. Henriquez has it knocked away. Fransky comes up with it for American U. Well, the VCU players thought there should have been a foul on American before the American player was uh, out fouled and the uh, referee not seeing their side of it. Lanchus on the left flank. It's kicked out of there by Tony Waugh for the Rams. Senior out of Jamaica. Back comes American U, Otero, and back towards midfield. This is Bob Brennan, the freshman out of Northport, New York, and all the way back to Avery John. American moving the ball from uh, the right side of the field to the left side of the field, and vice versa, quite a bit, having a lot of possession, but haven't been very dangerous on, on any of it so far. Todd Miller into the center of the field, Trevor Ellis battling with uh, VCU's John Moffat over there in the far corner. Capilla coming back on the field right now. And, so that uh, was quick, just like you said. I think he was just a little bit shaken up, and uh, I think he'll be fine. Here's the tail end of that last play. It was Lorenz Baumgartner, not Moffitt, getting entangled over there with Trevor Ellis. A little bit of a physical play, but pretty harmless. Jim Larkin started all 21 games, now 22 games for VCU in the Nets and gave up uh, 19 goals, 71 saves. And again, back comes American. It's one nothing, as you see, upper left-hand corner of the screen on our Kellogg's commercial free scoreboard. Down to about 34-40 to go here in the first half. The one goal by Moffitt, just about seven minutes into the first half. Yeah, we still have a long way to go. A lot of time in the first half um, for both teams, so just going to a defensive shell right now because they have the one goal lead in America. Can't be too impatient um, trying to get that goal back right away. They, they have plenty of time to do that in this first half and also the second half. Tim O'Sullivan actually talked about that in reverse, Richie, in the first meeting between the teams. Again, American controlled the ball, he said, for most of that game, and he said, we got a little impatient in trying to get the ball from them, and we've just got to play our kind of defense, and we'll get our chances. Right. I think uh, the way VCU is going to play is uh, you're going to see a lot of defense, and they're going to be patient, and uh, hopefully their chances will come throughout the game, and one came very early for them, so that definitely helps them. It's got to be a positive uh, look for them. And again, Larkin will have an opportunity to kick it out of there. We asked uh, Tim O'Sullivan about the revenge factor, and he kind of denied it a little bit, but in reading some of the quotes in the newspapers from guys like Jim Larkin, they were pretty fired up to play Madison and then George Mason, two teams that they had lost to during the regular season and had long losing streaks against over the last uh, five years. Yeah, well, I think anytime you're playing teams that, you know, you haven't been successful against and this year and in the past, uh, I think you definitely are going to be excited to be able to play them and show them that, you know, you're not a bad team, that you can go out there and beat them. And uh, I think that is their attitude, uh, the players. VCU had lost 12 in a row to James Madison before beating them 1-0, and had lost 9 in a row to George Mason before beating the Patriots 2-0, including a 5-0 loss earlier this year. Well, yeah, they knocked them off right back to back, so uh, that's a great for uh, VCU, and it's got to give them confidence coming into this game. And uh, Ricardo Capilla said, particularly George Mason, they, they hurt our pride, he said. We wanted that one after the 5-0 regular season loss. Enrique 
Reyes on the right flank for VCU. Now John Moffitt, the goal scorer. And back to Guillermo Henriquez, who loses it to Angel Manchez. And a nice uh, sliding interception by Trevor Spencer, but he can't control it for the Rams. AU back again. Pearson down the left flank. Manchez centers the ball. But a lot of black shirts there. I talked to Bob Jenkins before the game and saying Lanchester is a very good left flank player and uh, is very dangerous. And hopefully uh, they can get, if American can get something going and get him down the length, left flank to get some balls in for Pearson, they, they could probably be successful in that way. Tell us a little more about Bob Jenkins. You uh, you played for him when Bruce Arena was the head coach at, uh, at UVA? Yeah, Bob's a good guy, uh, a great uh, a great. And, uh, a pretty funny guy, and uh, he's he's he, he's no soccer very well. Uh, he's very involved in, uh, I think, also the the, the ODP programs and uh, coaching um, a lot of youth also. So uh, he's done well, and uh, you can see here he's definitely one of the top quality college coaches in the country. We got to look at him just a moment ago. Could you kind of get the feel when he was one of Bruce's assistants that someday he'd he'd run his own program? Oh, definitely. Uh, I think all the assistants that come to Virginia ultimately, you know, want to go and. Uh, try to get the Robin American opened up for Bob, uh, and he had some work to do, and he's proved that he's uh, been successful. He had a uh, losing record the first four years here, but since then, he's 27 and 11. You take Tim, Tim O'Sullivan also, who was at uh, University of Richmond for a long time, and did very well at Richmond, and chose to change over to VCU, and uh, also has shown that uh, he's a quality coach, and uh, has put his team into the uh, national spotlight. Now that is not a, a transition you see very often down there in Virginia's capital city. From uh, Richmond to VCU. And we have had a yellow card, as you see. Let's take a look at what happened. This is Trevor Ellis of AU. I think he just got the yellow card for uh, yelling at the ref or actually bumping the... Oh, bumping he did. The, Look uh, at that. Yep. Uh, the linesman, uh, which is probably not the, the best thing to be doing. So you can get mad, but you're not supposed to really go after the ref at all. Yeah, I guess he wanted the foul on Lorenz Bardner, who he was battling with and elbowing with a little bit there in the corner. Call didn't go his way, and Ellis uh, lost a little bit of his cool. Kind of lucky he only got a yellow card for uh, making contact with the referee. Mm -hmm. So the Eagles back with the ball. Lanchus kicks it back into the offensive end. 1-0 VCU on the Moffitt goal, seven minutes in. Scott Pearson looking to wind up for his first shot on goal, and it's blocked away by VCU. Scott Pearson's shown his attacking abilities there, getting the ball at the top of the 18 and, and looking for an opening, and uh, couldn't really find anything, so he decided to shoot the ball, and it was uh, blocked by a VCU defender. Looked like Emmanuel Tatois out of uh, France, blocking the shot before it could get in on goal on, on Jim Larkin. But uh, Pearson, you could just tell, he looked like he was ready to wind up and pull the trigger. He hadn't had an opportunity through the first 15 minutes. Yeah, he's got to be very eager around that goal area. And uh, he'll definitely uh, have his chances today, and uh, hopefully for American, if, uh, a lot of it rides on whether he can put the ball in the back of the net. Steven Fransky, they call him the quarterback of this team. He kind of sets the tone. Yeah, you have Stephen Fransky and Avery John, uh, the two center, ba center backs uh, for American University, uh, defending constantly and also controlling the ball a lot and uh, starting the, the play from the, from the defense up into the offense. This is Dwayne Bergeron at midfield. He loses it, and again, AU comes back the other way where most of this first half has been played. Erwin Lacrom on the left flank for the Rams to Baumgartner. And now Todd Miller, the senior out of Marlton, New Jersey. And Larkin will come up and make that play. Tim O'Sullivan was saying before the game, if BCU stays together uh, defensively and uh, very comp, it'd be very hard for a team uh, to, to get at them or to score goals. Uh, their main thing is not letting American get, get behind them. And as we've seen uh, here early in the game, Americans had a lot of the ball, but haven't been able to get behind the back four of VCU. They've played very well defensively and very organized. Tim O'Sullivan teams in the past have uh, been pretty good at that, of finding the top players and kind of just blanketing them with uh, defensive coverage, suffocating defensive coverage. AU again on back, and again, VCU will just kick it out of harm's way. 
and up into the onto the track. When you're playing a team like VCU, when they are playing very defensive, you need to get the ball to the flanks as much as possible, get it wide, and hopefully get some crosses in and getting some bodies in, in front of the goal. Um, even if it's not a clear-cut chance, if the ball is bobbled by the goalkeeper or, or cannot be cleared, uh, you have an opportunity to score a goal. So American has to keep that in, in mind. They want to be successful here today. And again, it just looks like AU is uh, probing the defense of VCU, trying to find an opening, and the Rams just keep kicking it out of there. Todd Miller retreats to come up with it. Angelucci touches it and crosses it to Brennan. And again, the Eagles will start the attack upfield. You can really see a pattern developing. Definitely. VCU just dropping off one, uh, the one forwards uh, up in American's end and everybody else uh, sitting back. Avery John with a lot of the ball early in the game, trying to get the ball forward as, as much as possible. Right now, that forward is Capilla for VCU. That's him right there as he hits the deck again as he became entangled with Antonio Otero. Capilla spent a lot of time on the grass here in the first half. American defenders getting hard on Capilla, knowing he's, he's a definite threat, as we can see here. Actually looked like a pretty good tackle. He got most of the ball, uh, but I guess it was from behind, and the referee thought it was a foul. So VCU will have an opportunity, a rare opportunity, even though they're leading, to get the ball into the offensive third. And again, AU comes right back with it. Bob Brennan in the far corner with John Moffitt. And AU up the right flank, but the Rams are there. Only foul story, four on VCU, six on American. Well, there's one for VCU. Yeah. So we'll make that 6-5. Yep. Ellis with the kick on our side of the field for Todd Miller. Both teams showing their aggressiveness. Not not dirty teams, but just hard, hard nosed, and uh, you know coming out here and playing hard. And uh, when you do that in soccer, you're obviously going to have fouls at times. The CAA title is at stake today, but both coaches are are hopeful and in fact confident that they're in the field of 32, no matter what happens here today. And again, the Rams kick it out of harm's way, and the conference itself is hopeful that three teams will be in that field with William and Mary. I think we've seen this year that the CAA is a very strong conference, so they definitely should be, you know, getting at least three bids to the NCAA tournament, but you never know when it comes down to uh, bid day. Um, I'm sure both teams in the back of their mind have that uh, going, thinking they may, but I, I, would, I would sure hope they would uh, both get in with the, the top 20 rankings that they both hold. Yeah, these two and William and Mary, all three of them, and likely participants, and of course the uh, men's soccer final winds up in the, the home of the Colonial Athletic Association in Richmond at University of Richmond Stadium. Hopefully it doesn't get too cold by now. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cold, windswept day today. American does a nice job to dive on the loose ball. American just throwing it on the box and getting a couple of headers and the ball's bouncing around and hoping they were hoping that they get a bounce their way, but goalkeeper came up very big. And even so, when they did, there were a lot of black shirts around the uh, the goal. You'll see the ball in front of the net, but look at all the black shirts surrounding uh, Jim Larkin. Yeah, just throwing the ball in the box and uh, seeing what can happen. A lot of defenders and a lot of a lot of forwards in the box and uh, goalkeeper comes up with it though. So Larkin makes the save. Dwayne Bergeron, the junior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Three goals, 10 assists this season. Set a VCU record for assists, in fact, with 10. Thomas Strachel, top of the box. And now the Eagles are there to clear it out. Here comes Steven Fransky right up the middle of the field. Launches and back to Todd Miller. And again, the Eagles set it up. Just setting up the play. Uh, every time they get the ball, they're just setting up and uh, holding the ball and possessing it and trying to set something up and get forward and uh, hopefully they'll get some chances. Trevor Ellis trying to center it, but can't do so. You saw the shots on goal a moment ago, four to one, but VCU has the goal on its shot from John Moffitt. It's a great percentage and uh, every <laughs> yeah. coach will love that percentage. Can't do any better. 
But VCU, is, uh, like we said, is playing very defensive. Um, they have struck some passes together in their offensive zone, but really haven't produced anything uh, to get other than that one free kick that they had for the goal. Those are two of Jim Larkin's VCU record 11 shutouts and a career record 25 shutouts at VCU. I don't want to disagree with Tim O'Sullivan, but I'd say that's pretty outstanding. Very good. Yeah. Uh, we know the point hey. that Tim was making earlier that maybe Larkin isn't a, the glitz and glory of a goalkeeper, but he's just very solid, and obviously the coaches around the league know that. He's a three-time All-CAA standout. Yeah, well, the bottom line is uh, to be uh, to win at the end of the game, so uh, you know, he's done the job, and he's got the wins, and, uh, so uh, I would definitely uh, like to have him on my team. And again, play continues on the far side in the American U's offensive end. Rams with the 1-0 lead. Todd Miller, the six-foot senior, had four goals this year. Avery John, back to his netminder, Jeff Angelucci. Been kind of a lonely man for the most part back there, except for the one goal. He hasn't had much of the ball at all. That might be the coldest guy on the field at the moment. He hasn't had much action. Watching the game right now, American trying to get behind the VCUD, but looking out there on the field, they're very, very organized and very compact and not letting it much get down the middle of the field. So it's going to be very hard in American to try to break this thing. And uh, you wonder, Richie, when do they, you know, American U, do you ever get impatient? I mean, I know we got a long way to go, obviously. This is still the first half, but uh, you don't want them to come out of their game plan either. Right, you, you can't get impatient. You have to keep playing. You have to keep trying. Here we see very aggressive play by nine on VCU. Uh, Trevor Spencer. Trevor Spencer. With, uh, Scott Weber. Looked like a pretty good tackle, but ref saw it differently, and uh, American has a free kick here. Scott Weber had two goals against East Carolina. Here's his kick in on goal and scooped up nicely by Larkin. Yeah, Scott didn't hit that as well as I think he wanted to, and uh, it was an easy save for a VCU goalkeeper. But Bob Jenkins made an interesting comment on uh, Weber. He said, you know, when he's good, he's really, really good. But if he's if he's off his game a little bit, notice that also. Yeah, sometimes that's uh, the way players are, uh, you know, kind of inconsistent at times. and. Uh, that could do sometimes do with uh, if you're a younger player or you just haven't played in that many games. So hopefully he has a good game and, and plays well and, and shows himself well here in this uh, CAA final. There he is right there with the kick. Weber, the junior out of uh, New York. They posted a couple of pretty good years with 10 goals last year and eight goals this year. Otero on the left for American U. And leaves it in front of the VCU bench for Angel Lanches. And now Miller and Avery John. And again, VCU players just surrounding the ball and keeping it out of uh, really any harm's way. Yeah, I think if Lanchas can get going on the left-hand side and maybe, you know, get down the left flank and get some crosses in, that'll definitely help American. Uh, but every time he gets the ball, there's a lot of VCU defenders around him and he hasn't had much opportunities. Scott Pearson, who's had uh, one decent opportunity on goal, but that's been it. The leading scorer in the CAA, 21st leading scorer in the country this year. Steven Fransky has the ball taken away. Nice play on the far side. Trevor Spencer. To Weber. And again, American U just can't get of the field to the to the top area. Yeah, possession, but it's just breaking down in the uh, final third of the field. They need to be, uh, or take some shots. Try to have some opportunities here. Pretty good crowd on hand here at Reeves Field at American U on a cold, blustery day. A lot of the uh, Eagle students sitting on the far side, the AU students hoping for a, their school to get a conference championship. Otero and back to Todd Miller. Both coaches uh, 
kind of admit that maybe the pressure isn't as great today as it was in the first two rounds to get to today. I know Bob Jenkins specifically talked about that, that uh, the pressure of getting to the championship game is now gone. Well, definitely, uh, they're the number one seed, so they're expected to be here in this final, and uh, they knew if they if they won the, f the quarterfinals and semifinals that they'd be here at, at their home field. So I think that had to, you know, put some pressure on Bob and the team, uh, but they showed that they, they won the games and that they probably feel a little bit comfortable now. Uh, also, VCU, the same thing, where maybe uh, they don't have such a strong schedule that uh, they need to win to, to possibly get into the NCAA tournament. You saw part of the crowd up close, and you can see it there on the far side watching the action with about 18 minutes, a little under to go here in the first half. one nothing VCU on the John Moffat goal about seven minutes into the match. Stephen Fransky at midfield, and immediately two VCU players are there to greet him. Ricardo Capilla, Dwayne Bergeron. VCU just dropping off to the halfway uh, line. Uh, very content and just sitting back and uh, seeing if American can uh, score on them and uh, get forward on them and uh, really just trying to counterattack. Bergeron loses it. And now the Eagles almost with an opportunity, but Strashel comes up with it. And again, kicks it out. Everywhere American turns, there's a VCU defender, so it's been very hard on them. Otero has to reach the way back to Avery John. And John in on the top of the box. Lanchus on the left side, tries to center it. Camp Capilla for VCU. Gets knocked down by Bob Brennan. Capilla's been on the ground an awful lot today. Came American. out of the game briefly after one of those knockdowns. Well, I'm sure the American University players know that, you know, he's definitely their offensive threat and need to be, you know, very strong on him and stay close to him. So when you have that mentality, sometimes you uh, go in a little bit too strong and uh, end up fouling the player. Tony Waugh in on goal. Henriquez centers it. But there's Steven Fransky to come up with it, and back come the Eagles. Scott Weber crossing on the far side, but Lacrom is there for VCU. Last couple times, American University hasn't made very good passes. I think they are getting a little impatient right here. Uh, they need to just settle down and know that there's time left in the game and keep trying to do what, uh, what's best for them. Well, you can see how that could become frustrating if you're an American player to be playing this style now, knowing you're down one nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of time, but... That defense just suffocates you. But so far, American's done a pretty good job of that. We've seen the same pattern the entire game. Here comes an opportunity for Baumgartner. The goalie's out of there, and he scores! Lorenz Baumgartner for VCU, and it's 2 nothing. Ams. Well, I think there was a, a little bit of trouble with the defender and the goalkeeper. Uh, the defender thought the goalkeeper was going to get the ball, and the goalkeeper thought the defender was going to get the ball. So there was a little confusion in the back, and uh, Baumgartner just snuck in there and uh, scored the goal. Take a look as Angelucci made the decision to come out, and he made it too late. The ball from Capilla right into uh, to Baumgartner, and he uh, settles the ball down nicely and knocks it into the goal for a 2-0 lead for you. They had it as probably the only time, uh, the second time they've been that deep into American University's half, and uh, they are two for two. That's just what you were talking about. The percentage still remains perfect for the Rams, and this game is going exactly the way uh, Tim O'Sullivan wants, certainly not the way Jeff Angelucci wants, and he'll have some time now to think about that goal because, again, American U will control the ball in their offensive end, but unable to really get a good shot on goal. Tim, O'Sull Tim O'Sullivan's got to be happy right now with the two-goal lead, 15 minutes left in the first half. Um, he knows that a strong point of his team is, uh, is his defense and uh, being very organized and not letting too many teams get at him. So he's got to be very happy going into halftime, and I'm sure that they're going to try to hold on to this 2-0 lead here. Weber centers it. Pearson nearly had an opportunity to deflect it home, but couldn't. And John Moffitt kicks it to the other end of the field. That's where I see American being being successful, as I said earlier, from trying to get the ball down the lengths. They got it down to the right-hand side, and they got a cross in, and it was a little bit dangerous. So I think they need to explore that option a little bit more, Here especially the, in the second half. The Rams again, Moffitt to Henriquez. And uh, Moffitt couldn't believe the pass he just made. He probably thinking, I should have kept that one. His arms up in the air wondering, what did I just do? 
Well, I know American University's been in this situation before throughout the regular season, especially against William & Mary. They were down 3-0, uh, I believe, and uh, come back, came back to win the, win the game 4-3. So they have some experience being down before in, in the season, and uh, hopefully that experience will help them. In fact, you could uh, put the, the moniker comeback kids on this American team. You're right, that William & Mary game, they've also come back in a game at Princeton and a game here against UNC Wilmington. They were trailing as well and came back to win. So three times this year, they have rallied from deficits to win games, and today they're going to have to come back from at least 2-0, about uh, 50 minutes, 55 minutes or so of soccer to go. 2-0 VCU, and they've had just the two shots on goal. Derek Roberts lost it. Back come the Rams again at midfield Bergeron. Ahead to Baumgartner, who has the second goal, and now onto the left flank, where Brennan will come up with it for American U. And on the near side, the uh, Strashel onto the sideline. And again, Jim Larkin will get himself poised for another attack by the Eagles. They keep coming, but VCU's there to, to take them and uh, not let them get behind them. They really have done a good job, and really, Richie Larkin hasn't had a, a severe test yet. He's had some balls in on him, but nothing that he really had to make any kind of acrobatic save on. No, the one shot that uh, Pearson got at one time was deflected, didn't even get to the goalkeeper, so Larkin is, uh, has done well. Uh, part of his job is also to organize the defense, so hopefully that he doesn't have any of those tough shots to make. If he organizes his defense in the right way and gets his players in the right positions, then it will be a lot harder for American to get through there, get shots off, and to get crosses, which will, would, would make it difficult on, on Larkin. Yeah, that's a good point. He is a, a good organizer of that defense, and uh, right now they're following his commands. There's no doubt about that. Play at midfield, Dwayne Bergeron, and now Thomas Strasher. And the Eagles come back again. Pearson looks to make something happen. Scott Pearson still with it and now loses it. Fransky. Switch the, the, uh, the attack at times. They're getting a little bit caught on the one side. If they switch it quicker, get the ball down to the other side, they can get a cross in and hopefully a shot on goal. Fransky almost with an opportunity, but there was Tony Waugh, the senior out of Jamaica, to come in about a step quicker. It's a patch of the field there on the, on the left side here. It's pretty bad, and uh, some of the players are having a tough time passing the ball through it, so... I would expect they would try to switch it to the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. It still is a little bit muddy, a little wet as we walked on the field before the game. Here's a centering pass. And Ellis had an opportunity, but again, he didn't get the shot on goal as the VCU defender was there to deflect it away. Ellis will try and center it again over the top of the goal. We saw a great uh, cross by Scott Weber there coming down the left flank. He got a nice cross in, uh, and uh, they actually got a little bit of an opportunity on it, but not, not a real clear-cut chance. The goalie didn't have to make a save. Nope. Approaching 10 minutes, 30 seconds to go as Kofi Say comes into the contest for VCU, a 5'6 sophomore out of Richmond. The first change by choice for Tim O'Sullivan. He did have to get uh, Capia out of the game for, what, maybe a minute or two because of the injury. And then he was right back in there. Lacrom for the Rams loses it right at midfield. But VCU again surrounds that ball. Every time you look up, you see an American player up top, one of their forwards, but uh, you always see two or three uh, VCU defenders around him. Bergeron, yep. Tough to score a goal that way. Tough to get opportunities. So American, uh, at some point during the game, is going to have to get some more people forward. And I would think it would be VCU's goal right now to get to halftime at two nothing. That would be uh, that would be great for their confidence going into halftime two nothing, playing in the final at American away from home. So uh, I think that's definitely what they're going to they're intending to do here. Well, conversely, how important is it for American to to get a goal here in the last? nine minutes of the first half. Well, that would definitely uh, lift their spirits a little bit, getting a goal here in the last nine and a half minutes. And, uh, they would definitely have the uh, confidence going into the second half. 
um, that they know they could score some goals. I mean, I, uh, two goals, you can come back in 45 minutes is a lot of time, but again, to this kind of defense, that kind of shortens the game on you a little bit. Definitely. It would be a little bit harder for America. And Eric Block comes into the game for AU as you see Derek Roberts go out for the Eagles. Block, really an interesting story. He's a graduate student. As an undergraduate, he played at Brown, but he only played three years. He had one year of eligibility left, even though academically he graduated from uh, Brown in the Ivy League. And uh, he gets one year here at American U. And that hopefully will help the American University out today. Bob Jenkins said that, uh, you know, you can't have the whole team full of transfers or full of 50 or players, but uh, one or two would help. And uh, he said he's definitely helped the season. And uh, I'm sure he's hoping he will help him out right now up, front, up top and score a goal. Lanchus leaves it for Fransky and now onto the far side of the field. Trevor Ellis, midfield to Fransky. And again, there's two Rams, although Fransky did a pretty good job of splitting the two of them, but there was a third Ram to take him off the ball. Yeah, the center of the field is pretty clogged up. A lot of BC def uh, like I was saying earlier, they just need to move the ball from the middle to the to the flanks and get some crosses in. That's where they've been the most successful so far in this first half. American uh, getting crosses in, they're a little bit dangerous that way. And there's less defenders also outside on the outside of the field. Kofi Say has his pass intercepted by Scott Weber, and back again comes American. Here comes Otero down the right flank, but overran the ball, and the Rams are there to come up with it. Say leaves it for Brown and now to Strashel. Looking for Capilla at midfield. Moffitt now has an opportunity, but is uh, marked off the ball. Nice tackle by Steven Fransky to knock the ball away from uh, the VCU forward. Approaching seven minutes to go here in half number one from Reeves Field at American U. 2-0, VCU with the advantage on goals by John Moffitt and Lorenz Baumgartner. VCU has taken their opportunities very well in the two dangerous situations, came up with two goals. Um, so they have to be very happy with that situation. Here's one rolled right in on Larkin, and he surrounds it. And as we can see, Bob Jackson, Jenkins was not very, probably not very happy with the way American is attacking, made a change at the forward position. And how much of that do you feel is a result of the fact that it's 2-0 and the fact that the Suffolk defense by VCU is uh, maybe making these AU players play a little bit differently now? Definitely. There's a near opportunity, but again, Larkin comes out, makes a good play. Then I would think it gets in the back of the Eagles' mind when they do have an opportunity and they miss it, you start thinking, geez, how many more of these are we even going to get? Yeah, I guess so. You, you could you could start to think that way, but you you, you really shouldn't. Um, you know, I mean, they they really haven't had that clear cut of opportunity. Here's a nice ball through. Uh, American player just can't ca catch up to it, and Larkin come off came off his line very well to uh, to scoop the ball up. And as we said, the Eagles are well versed in coming back, so they're not going to panic. Certainly, it's only two nothing, and they've got more than a half still to go. And they've got several wins this year in comeback fashion. And they're very tough to beat here at home. They haven't lost here in uh, nearly two seasons. Moffitt on the right flank. Is it? Weber comes up with it. And kicked out of there by Angelucci back towards midfield. Lanchus has had the ball on his foot a lot today for America. And Avery John kicks it to midfield. And the Eagles come back again. Here's Pearson down the left flank. Let's see what he can do with it. He makes a move towards the center, and nobody there for the Eagles. Yeah, Pearson and Block are uh, getting a lot of the ball, but they don't have too much support. They're getting it. There's a lot of BC defenders on them, and they don't have a lot of places to go with the ball. So they need to get the ball, hold the ball up, and have the American University midfielders uh, coming and supporting them, and hopefully they can get something started here. There's a look at Trevor Spencer for VCU. And again, Lanchus for the Eagles. And Bob Brennan, the defender, to midfield for Antonio Otero, first team all CAA. -er.
Terrell with the ball to Fransky. American definitely having a lot of the possession here. A lot more of the ball than VCU, but as we've seen, they haven't been as successful in the attacking end. Their shots on goal have been fairly routine to this point. Well, I think they need to be a little bit more quicker. They do have a lot of the ball, and they are possessing it a lot, but it looks a little bit too slow the way the ball is moving around. They have to have some guys moving off the ball and have the ball move a little bit quicker, or they're not going get to get, get anywhere uh, in the VCU's end. It's almost like a, a college basketball team that plays a lot of zone. The offense has to make quick passes exactly. from one player to another. And you have to move off the ball very well to support each other. Mm -hmm. Down to the last 3.30 of the first half. By Black, Richie Williams at Reeves Field at American U. Hope you're enjoying our Kellogg CAA Championship game on HTS. The score in the upper left-hand corner of your screen brought to you commercial-free by our good friends at Kellogg's. As we hit the three-minute mark in the throw in for VCU. Yeah, VCU very content just getting into halftime with a 2-0 lead. Um, they're just going to defend, maybe counterattack a couple times, but other than that, I think they're just very content just getting in with the lead and um, hopefully for the second 45 minutes holding off American. I think content was a very good word. Yes. Yeah, with the 2-0 with the advantage. They probably would have been relatively content with the 1-0 advantage on the, the goal early on in the first eight minutes, but they have two very definitely. Well, we have a corner kick here now for American, Scott Weber. First Weber, one of the game, right? I think I believe it's the first one of the game. He had a nice cross in earlier, so hopefully he can uh, get something, uh, a good cross here on this corner kick. Sends it in on net and headed out of there by Tony Waugh of VCU. Dangerous ball there, and I think they need more of that to, uh, to try to get some chances here. Good play by Thomas Strashel on the near side as he battled Scott Weber. Scott Weber again here for a free kick on the foul. Another dangerous area. American U now applying even some more pressure with the corner kick a moment ago, and now the free kick with the last two minutes of the first half. Weber crosses it, other side of the net, headed in on goal and wide. Just wide by Eric Block. Uh, he's giving American a little bit more up front, um, uh, and that, I think that's why Bob Jenkins has made that and uh, brought him in. He's had a couple opportunities and he had the header there. It was just a little bit wide. There's Todd Miller backpedaling. And Jim Larkin to kick it on out of there. And right to midfield. Baumgartner, who has the second goal for VCU and three blue and white shirted Eagles there to take him off and now to Capilla. The other reason that Tim O'Sullivan's got to feel happy, uh, they've got a 2-0 lead and Ricardo Capilla Counted for any of that, really. Well, he had the one nice uh, assist oh, there on, right. on the second goal yeah. he, that he put through. So he 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 was involved a little bit, but uh, yeah, he hasn't scored at all. So nope. he has scored in uh, a lot of goals throughout the season in the first two games of the tournament. So that's a plus if uh, he comes through and scores a goal in the yep. uh, in the second half. And I'm sure his teammates are saying, "Hey, you got us here. We'll help get you the championship trophy now." Right. Capilla had the only goal in the win over Madison and both goals in the win over Mason. But the two goals today, Offit and Baumgartner for the Rams. Down to 30 seconds to go in the first half. Maybe one more rush for American U before halftime. Miller on the left flank. And that will probably about do it. Tony Wall kicks it back towards the other end of the field with 10 seconds to go in the half. Avery John will kick it down towards goal. One last chance here if they can get a shot. And they do, but it's high and over the crossbar, and the first half comes to an end, and Tim O'Sullivan and the VCU Rams have to be thrilled with the first half of soccer here at American U in the Kellogg CAA Men's Championship game. Goals by John Moffat and Lorenz Baumgartner have given VCU a 2-0 lead on top-seeded American U at the end of the first 45 minutes. So there you have it, half and with the score of ECU 2 and American nothing, we'll continue with our coverage of the CAA Men's Championship match on HDS.
Sports, title sponsor of the 1997 CAA Soccer Championship. And one of these teams is 45 minutes away from its first ever CAA championship. Right now, VCU has the upper hand with a 2-0 lead on American at halftime. Bob Black, Richie Williams, you at Reeves Field in our nation's capital, where the Rams have that 2-0 lead on the Eagles. Let's take a look at uh, some of the individual standouts during the course of the 1997 season. Richie and the uh, Colonial Athletic Association were watching several of the guys uh, today that were on the All-CAA first and second teams. Yeah, great list of players right there. I've proven uh, over the year that they deserve the award that they received. And uh, as you can see, Avery John, Stephen Fransky, uh, and a couple of Scott Pearson, uh, Mark, and uh, all players playing here today. Here's a look at the second team as well. And again, some guys who you're watching today, including uh, Ricardo Capilla. And we'll talk a little bit more about him when we turn the page one more time to our all CAA individual honors. The player of the year from William & Mary, Wade Barrett, had another outstanding season. The other two fellas you're watching here today, Bob Jenkins, the coach at American U, is our 97 CAA coach of the year. And the aforementioned Ricardo Capilla is the 97 rookie of from VCU. As we said, it's 2-0 Rams leading American, and Richie, let's take the folks through exactly how this happened. Take us back to the first half and the foul that led to the first goal. Well, I believe it was a, uh, there was a foul right there on the American player on, uh, on Capilla, and uh, it's a dangerous uh, place for a foul, as we can see here. Um, at the Lorenz Baumgartner with a nice ball in and a great finish by VCU for to take a 1-0 early lead. John Moffin, you almost couldn't see him. That's how many blue and white shirts were around there. And as we said at the time, it's almost hard to tell how Moffitt was able to see the, the kick coming in towards him, but he did a great job of it and put it in the net to make it a 1-0 VCU lead. There's the goal with the assist off of the kick from Lorenz Baumgartner. Here we see it again. Plenty of defenders around, but no one sacks the ball except for Moffitt, and he sticks it in the back of the net. That gave the Rams a 1-0 lead on one shot, and they would take a 2-0 lead on two shots with about 15 and a half minutes to go. Uh, the goalkeeper, Jeff Angelucci, who made the decision to come out on this ball and was a little late. Well, Capilla plays the ball through, and I think the defender and, and the and the uh, goalkeeper are not sure who's going to get it. And uh, Baumgartner comes straight in and uh, takes it and knocks it in the back of the net. Uh, for a 2 nothing lead and uh, two opportunities and two goals. One more look at it from uh, behind the VCU attack. Nice ball through. A little confusion there, and uh, VCU picks it up and, and uh, hits a nice goal. And, and on the scoreboard, it shows 2 nothing VCU on the Baumgartner goal with the assist from Rookie of the Year, Ricardo Capilla. On our, on our Baumgartner with the goal, yeah. On our, on our uh, Brian stat sheet, the big number is Richie, 9 to 2. The shots on goal belong to AU, but as you said, 2 for 2 is about as good as you can get. Yeah, VCU is, uh, is a great script right here. Uh, they come into the game, they know they're a very good defensive. Uh, and they get two opportunities and they score on them. Uh, American, who has most, most of the possession throughout the game, who's ha had the ball the whole time, but uh, nine shots on goal, but nothing uh, very serious and uh, nothing uh, nothing to, to write home about there. We will see if American U can mount some sort of offensive momentum in the second half. Back with second half action coming up next. back to American University. We're getting set for the start of the second half. VCU leading AU by a score of two to nothing. Bob Black, Richie Williams, and our HTS team. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the Kellogg CAA Men's Soccer Championship. Well, let me put you in the, the coach's seat here a little bit. If you're Bob Jenkins, what kind of changes strategically do you have to make to try and to find a crack in this VCU defense? Well, they definitely have a lot of possession. They have a lot of the ball, but what they're doing is I think they're slowing it down too much. They need to move a little bit quicker, get a lot of people off the ball moving. And uh, the forwards are getting the ball, but they have no support. And uh, so I think they just need to get some more players forward, get the ball wide out to the flanks and get some crosses in. And I think they, they could find some su success there. Now, if you're VCU for, for Tim O'Sullivan, is it just more of the same, or do you, you tighten the screws even more? Well, you definitely have to defend. Um, you know, you have the 2 nothing lead. I'm sure they're going to put more emphasis on defending than actually getting forward, but they can't stop playing. they got to, you know, try to uh, try to play a little bit, um, and uh, they can't just keep kicking it because it could get very tired, and that could affect them defensively. Well, here we go. American U already on the attack to start this second half. 
Eric Block, who finished up the first half, starts the second. Trevor Ellis looking to center. He's got Pearson, but Pearson loses the ball as Trevor Spencer came up with it. Avery John keeps it on the offensive, though. And now Block on the right side. Trying to make a move. There's four black-shirted Rams right around him. We're seeing the same thing as we saw in the first half. American definitely with the ball and attacking a lot, but BCU just holding very strong on, de on defense. Fransky to the other side for the Rams, or for the Eagles, beg your pardon, Todd Miller. Trying to get it in, but Tony Wall quick to the ball to Capilla at midfield. He can't come up with it as Bob Brennan does. And the Eagles stay on the attack. And Avery John searching for an opening again. But again, it's kicked out of there. I'm sure Bob Jenkins had some had some words with his players. Probably was not very happy with the uh, the two defensive uh errors that they had in the back to give up the goals and uh, I'm sure he said to this team that uh, you know we've we've been here before we've been down before uh, and we've come back and, and won the game so I don't think they're going to be panicking they have 45 minutes to try to get uh, the two goals to tie it up and possibly a third to win it again on the attack looking for Trevor Ellis on the right flank can't get it to him Trevor sticking his hand out with for a handball and uh, the linesman flagging him for that Tim O'Sullivan looking for his second CAA championship. As Richie mentioned earlier, his other one came across town at Richmond trying to get VCU its first CAA title. And on the other hand, Tim must have been very happy at halftime uh, with his players, you know, two chances and scoring uh, two goals. So he's got to be very happy with that. He has to be happy with his defense. Um, he's probably told them definitely, you know, go out there, play, play your game, uh, but probably emphasizing a little bit more on the defensive side. Pearson in on goal, it's deflected by Larkin off the crossbar. That thing was ticketed for the upper corner and Larkin just got his hands on it and deflected it up to the bar. Well, here you see it again. Pearson with a great hit on goal. Larkin making a great save, deflects it and hits it off the goal, uh, the goal post and uh, off for a corner kick. I uh, beg your pardon, that was Weber. Not, oh, uh, Weber. not okay. Pearson, my fault, that was Scott Weber. A great hit there and uh, a great save also. Really was. Mark contested really for the first time. Now the corner kick for American U as they center it. Ellis had it off his foot and couldn't do much with it. But the Eagles continue to apply the pressure. Now this is Pearson on the right side. And another corner kick coming for American U. Pearson controlled the ball, tried to get around the defender, but was knocked out for a corner kick. Uh, and they're going to try to regroup here and uh, try to get something off this kick. There's a good look at Scott Pearson, the three-time first-team CAA standout. 54 career goals, 28 assists. He's the number one active player in the NCAA in points scored. Eagles in on goal. Opportunity is high. And that one was Pearson, who's now looking high to the heavens as he knew he had a point-blank shot. It was a great opportunity for Scott Pearson and uh, for American to get on the scoreboard, and he just, uh, the ball was bouncing. It was, it was a little, it was a tough ball, but uh, and he hit it over the top, as we can see here in the replay. The ball was bouncing and uh, just got under it a little bit. He tried to one-time it as it came right to him. What we're seeing now, just here early in the, you know, the first five minutes of the second half, American has definitely it up a little bit more than they have in the first half. Uh, a little bit more urgency to them. They know that they need to come out here and score some goals, so hopefully for them it will work out. They'll keep it in their offensive end of the field. Baumgartner, who had one of the first half goals for VCU, and he loses it. Back comes American U again. That's a bad foul there by the VCU player. I believe it was Baumgartner, and I think uh, end up getting a yellow card here. Yeah, it doesn't make any attempt to go for the ball, as you see in the replay. And he did. You're exactly right. And Eric Block was the eagle who got tripped up and uh, was in a little bit of pain, and he's had some injury problems already this year with the sprained ankle. He's missed some time. Scott Weber. Knuckle balls it in on goal. Scott Weber had two chances there to put a nice ball, and then he really didn't hit it the way that he liked to. And uh, those are uh, some opportunities that American can't be wasting here. You know, 
ball is a good spot to get a good cross in and uh, to get a goal, but uh, they haven't been able to rely on it. So Jim Larkin, who has been tested probably more here in the first five minutes than he was in the entire first half, so far has been unscathed. And shown as he's a very good goalkeeper with that fine save in the first couple minutes. Yeah, leaping high to deflect it off the crossbar. And again, American U looking to apply some pressure. I don't know that. Oh, we have uh, some pushing and shoving. Bob Brennan and John Moffat right in midfield. Moffat not not very happy with the foul and the uh, American player coming in on the tackle. It looked pretty good to me. I wouldn't have called it a foul, but uh, obviously he saw it differently <laughs> and it's good upon himself to uh, show that to the opposition. Ball in the Rams offensive end really for the first time here in the second half. With the 2-0 advantage, Trevor Spencer in midfield. Thomas Strashel, and again, it'll be a throw in for AU. And the Eagles will mount yet another attack. Avery John, kind of the point man back there, looking to get it going. And here come the Eagles one more time, looking for Eric Block on the left side. Eagles with another opportunity on the centering pass, knocked away by Tatwa of VCU. Angel Lanches trying to center. American out of a lot of the play here, a lot of the ball in the uh, final third of the field, but are just not able to get the ball into the uh, 18. But it does seem like a different kind of dominating play. Like you said, they seem a little quicker, a little more uh, sense of urgency, I guess, was, was the phrase you used. Definitely. Uh, you know, they were a little bit slow in the first first half. Uh, they were completing passes, but uh, wasn't really getting in them anywhere. Um, where now they need to get that ball forward as quick as possible, switching the fields as, as much as possible, and uh, trying to get players in the box, and hopefully uh, something will happen for them. Scott Pearson, who's had one good opportunity, really two good opportunities, one in each half, and hasn't been able to convert. Avery John makes a move. Scott Weber, who had the great opportunity on the ball that Larkin deflected onto the crossbar. And we'll get a kick here for VCU. Well, obviously, he's going to want to play some defense, but they also can't forget about their offensive game and trying to complete some passes and, and keeping the ball. The more they just kick it, it's going to be hard on the defenders. They won't have as much time to rest, um, and the ball will be thrown back right, right back at them um, if they don't keep the ball a little bit. So they definitely have to make a conscious effort of doing that in the second half. Yes, there's kind of a little bit of a fine line there as to how much offense of aggressiveness you want, and you don't want to sacrifice the defense that's gotten you to this point. They've been very organized, uh, and uh, see that changing. Uh, you know, you just don't want to send everybody forward at all at one time. You want to make sure you have a good balance of defenders versus uh, attacking players. And Scott Pearson mixing it up over there a little bit for American. Trevor Spencer right there in the middle of your screen of VCU, the junior out of Kingston, Jamaica. And now the Rams control the ball, really, for one of the few times here in the first 10 minutes, almost, of the second half. Bob Gardner going after the ball. Looked like he was held by Bob Brennan. Gardner with the second goal, his fourth of the season. Ref stopping the clock here for uh, wasting time. And now start it back up again with the kick from Trevor Spencer or from uh, Erwin Lacrom. Down in towards goal, but VCU unable to come up with it. And back comes AU one more time. Well, you see American getting the ball and trying to knock a ball forward to, up front to one of their forwards, but they only have one player there. Here's a set, and there's a shot, and a goal! Scott Pearson takes advantage of the VCU defensive miscue, and Pearson has a huge first goal of the game. 
Well, there we saw a mistake by the VCU player uh, defender, and uh, they haven't done any of that in the first half, and that was kept them in the game, but very crucial mistake right there. Scott Pearson with his 18th goal of the season. The CAA scoring leader. As we see here on the replay, it was just the number three to tell. He's trying to get the, uh, trying to pass the ball. He mishandles it, and uh, Pearson, the goal scorer, who has a nose for the goal, picks it up and uh, just knocks it in the back of the net very calmly. And AU has done just what it needed to do, and that's get a quick tally at the start of the second half, and they've done that 10 minutes in and to make it a one-goal game at 2-1. to one. Definitely has to help their confidence and has to, you know, know that they now know that they can get a they can they can score in this VCU defense yeah. and they'll hopefully get that second and third goal. And we'll see if the Rams now apply a little bit more offensive pressure. We really haven't seen any of it all game. Their two goals have come on two quick opportunities. Play at midfield. Bergeron for VCU now to Strashel. And Angel Lanches comes up with it for the Eagles. Otero on the left flank. And the kick coming for AU. Scott Weber. And now Trevor Ellis, marked by LaCrom. Pair of number twos. You got it. The throw in to Steven Fransky. Well, you still look back at VCU and they still are very organized. I see a lot of the, their players back on defense. Um, still have, they haven't totally lost all their confidence. They still know that they have a, a goal lead here. Um, and uh, they're still you know, doing a little bit better than America at this point. But the, the pressure is so much greater by AU. And look at the shots on goal now at 12 to 2. Yeah, American has come out here in the uh, second half and really uh, has put uh, VCU under pressure. And that type of play is really getting physical and chippy, and we're seeing a lot of and shoving out there between players on these two teams. Very competitive game here for the championship, and uh, nobody wants to uh, be kicked by the other player, that's for sure. 27 fouls now, whistled. 14 against American. <laughs> come back again quickly on offense Lanches down the left flank and centered behind the goal Scott Pearson trying to get a left foot across and uh, just miss, miss hit it uh, but he's come out and been very dangerous here in the uh, second half mm -hmm. Jim Larkin giving up just the first goal that he's allowed in this tournament remember he shut out Madison one nothing and Mason two nothing and his team still with a two to one lead with 32 minutes to go here in the second half. By Baumgartner. And again, the Rams trying to mount some sort of offensive attack. Trevor Spencer on the near side. And it'll be a Visa American youth throw in. Scott Weber looking to center, but there's Tony Wall to knock it away. Back four still playing very strong for VCU. Uh, they made a mistake. Uh, wasn't uh, what they planned on doing here in the beginning of the second half, but they still look very solid in the back. Again, the, the Eagles with an opportunity. A shot on and a great save by Larkin. Point blank shot and Larkin equal to the occasion. Weber with a great shot there and Larkin coming up with a great save. Weber looking to take another chance. Can't do it as Tony Wall kicks it out. The Eagles have really turned up the offensive aggressiveness. As you said, Richie, with quicker plays, quicker passes, and strong acts on net. Definitely a sense of urgency. The ball's laid off. Weber just lines it up and uh, has a great whack of goal, but Larkin is in a great position to save it. And it looked like he had the inside post there. If Larkin doesn't knock it away. Yeah, the passes are a little bit crisper and a little bit quicker here for American in the second half. To, like I said, a little bit more urgency to get into the 18, to get players forward and try to get some goals. 
Weber to kick. And headed out there by Trevor Spencer. VCU rush to midfield. Down the right flank. Capilla has been somewhat involved, but a name we haven't mentioned a whole lot today. Basically see him a lot on the counterattack, as we saw in the first half of the two goals. Uh, VCU just coming out to defend real well and then counter with three or four players, and uh, hopefully they're trying to get the third goal here, and that would be a great boost for them here in the second half. Entering, but nobody there, and again, the Eagles come back quickly. Here's Trevor Spencer keeping it in for VCU. Spencer still with the ball, middle of the field. Has it intercepted by Weber. Weber to midfield. Down the right flank for Trevor Ellis. Ellis looking for an opening. He's got Eric Block in the center, but can't get him the ball. Back didn't really have any forward there. We only had, they only had about uh, two or three players um, in, in the attacking zone, and uh, VCU had four or five defenders. It looked uh, like the first half all over again. Weber tries to come up with it, can't. John Moffitt does for the Rams. And now to Guillermo Henriquez. Capilla races after it with Avery John. Two pretty good players. John with the ball off of the pass from Jeff Angelucci. Forgot man back there for America. Hasn't met much action here in the second half. We played, as you see, about 15, 16 minutes now, the second half. Still don't think he's made a save, though. I mean, the two, the two uh, opportunities he didn't really come up with there, and he hasn't had much uh, else to worry about. His big worry now is if his teammates can get another goal and tie this thing up. Stefan Franski looking to make a move, but again, Trevor Spencer is there. He's well for VCU. And Spencer there, the junior. And Scott Pearson from behind. Talking to Bob Jenkins at uh, the beginning of the game, said that uh, Scott Pearson is a very aggressive player, a very competitive player, and as we can see here, the last couple uh, fouls that he's committed. Just aggressive, uh, just trying to get the ball and get in the tackle and uh, not trying on purpose to kick the VCU player. Mark kicks it away. And Trevor Ellis will hustle after it on the near side. Fransky. Marked by Capilla. And the Eagles will retreat and set it up again. Avery John looking for the open man. It's Pearson. Onto the near side. That's Steven Fransky. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Fransky it in on goal looking for Pearson or Weber. And the shot deflected. Great ball by Fransky into the box and uh, a volley down by the American player. And uh, it was an opportunity there to, to try to tie the game up. Actually, uh, Angel Lanchas had the chance for American. And the Eagles looking for yet another chance. Play dominated in their offensive side of the field, really in both halves. But they're getting some results here in the second half. John Moffitt heads it back onto the other side of the midfield line. And here come the Eagles again. Down the left side, Scott Pearson centers it. On the near side, he's got Ellis, can't get the ball. I believe that was Lanchas actually with the cross. In, uh, and he's actually been a little bit more active here in the second half than he was in the first. I think that would uh, help America. Steven Fransky with the for the goal. Familiar name to, to CAA soccer fans. Steven Fransky with a brother, Gregory, who played uh, George Mason. Pretty good player. Good soccer family. Mm -hmm. Good bloodlines. Shots on goal continue to be tilted. Americans way. And as Richie pointed out, two shots, two goals, so no saves, really, for uh, Jeff Angelucci. Goal for American. Avery John and uh, Ricardo Capilla again, and Capilla winds up on the turf one more time. He's going to take some of that turf with him back to Richmond, I think. Capilla's actually been on the ground quite a bit <laughs> this game. Uh, very talented player. There he is with the ball in an upright position. Bob Gardner, left side, tries to center Avery John for American. Avery John just clearing the ball out of 
the American uh, zone. Didn't have really too much, too many options, so he was just being safe with the ball. Crom with the inbound. And back come the Eagles again. Two to one, VCU leading in the CAA Men's Soccer Championship. CAA with an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament, the field of 32. Both of these teams, plus William and Mary, are hopeful that they're in the tournament no matter who wins this. And that would be pretty promising for the CAA to have three schools in the uh, men's field of 32, as the women did with uh, William and Mary, George Mason, and uh, James Madison all making it from the women's side. The CAA is a very strong conference for soccer. As we've seen throughout the year, a lot of the teams have been ranked nationally, and uh, they're hoping to get some, some bids. Eric Block battling on the end line, had it knocked away, and that should be a corner kick for American U. A good change earlier to bring Eric Block into the game. He's been very active, holding the ball up quite well for American. Scott Weber with the corner kick coming up. American throw mostly everybody forward and just leaving two, player, two players back. Here comes the centering pass. The VCU does well to defend and has, has it all game. Avery John still with it. With it. Lanches centers it. Pearson over his head, and the shot the in on goal by Trevor Ellis, well wide. Good try by Trevor Ellis to volley that ball by Avery John, and uh, it just, uh, just hits it a little bit wide. Still two to one, VCU. Actually, crosses the chest from Avery John. Volley in the air, just slightly misses it a little bit wide. Probably wishes he could have that one over again. And the Rams are going to make a change. Guillermo Henriquez comes out. Dominic Amato is into the game number four, a 5-5 junior out of uh, Louisiana into the contest. Little guy just there in your picture fighting for the ball just a moment ago. Neither of these coaches substitute very much. In fact, uh, the would be considered a lot for Tim O'Sullivan. As we said, he made one change in the first half necessitated by injury. But sometimes when you substitute, uh, it takes away from the flow of the game that you already established with the players you have on. Here comes Pearson centering it in front, hoping that perhaps Eric Block could get to it, but Larkin smothered it. Probably also want to go with the 11 players that you, you know, you play the most, your best players. There's a motto. Into the game for the first time, literally cold off of the bench, I would say. And Avery John with the kick, the first team CAA standout a couple of years now. Junior college transfer, played a couple of years in uh, Arizona. Amato to Spencer, tied up on AU. But AU has definitely picked it up a little bit more, even uh, on their defense, they've gotten in for some tackles, being a little bit more physical. John Moffitt, and now Baumgartner on the sideline. Back to the Crom, down the left flank for Baumgartner, he can't catch up with it. VCU, VCU in the last couple minutes actually doing pretty well to maintain possession of the ball, to knock the ball around, uh, make American work a little bit harder than they had uh, earlier. And Baumgartner had to go off his foot the wrong direction and out of bounds on the throw in for AU. And they'll get another one. Down to 21 minutes to go, second half, two to one. VCU, the Eagles trying to find that tying goal. Angel Lanches, and the Eagles set it up again. Top of the box for Franski, in on goal. Trevor Ellis had a shot, couldn't get anything going. Again, VCU is there to defend and not give up much at all. A lot of players around the ball, a lot of players getting back on defense. 
Now they get it into their offensive end. Here comes Capilla down the left flank. A John marking him there. Capilla looks to make a move and double teamed and has it knocked away. Capilla does a nice job trying to get into the box and trying to get an opportunity for VCU, but Avery John there to, uh, to defense him. And Capilla again on the deck. And we'll get another change as Kofi Say comes back in for VCU and Baumgartner, Baumgartner huh? Comes out of the game a little bit shaken up, didn't quite see what happened to him. Baumgartner's had a very strong game for VCU here. Capilla with the centering pass. Whizzes right by. Looked like uh, Bergeron had an opportunity. Number six right there to try and deflect it on a header and couldn't do it. VCU's come alive here, putting a lot of pressure on America in, in, in their end and uh, actually knocking the ball around, getting some chances here. And of course, with each minute they keep it in the offensive end, that's one minute less that American has at the other end. Exactly. But now the Eagles come back again with Eric Block racing in on goal, can't get there. It's a for VCU and Block for American U. Eric Block does a great job, even though he doesn't get the ball, he makes the defender uh, kick the ball out of bounds to get a goal kick, uh, corner kick for, uh, for his team. So another chance for American. Corner kick coming up. Antonio Otero. On goal. The header by Pearson. And kicked out by Moffitt. And headed away. That time by Lacrom. And another corner kick coming up for AU. AU's look pretty dangerous on these corner kicks. And I'm sure they're happy to be able to get some. So here's the next corner kick. They've been coming in rapid succession here for the Eagles. And this time, VCU does a good job on the defense. And Lacrom kicks it to midfield. Capilla shadowing Bob Brennan. Back to Jeff Angelucci. And the Eagles start again. Amato, the sub, who came in the game about three minutes ago. Now Trevor Spencer, and back to Tony Wall. ECU looking, looking good here, stringing some passes together, maintaining possession of the ball, keeping it from American. Moffitt onto the left side, but Trevor Ellis is there for AU. And his lead pass goes off the sideline as Eric hustled after it, but couldn't quite get there. So the throw in for the Rams. Ellis comes up with it. And now Otero. More pressure being applied by American. As Lanchas makes a run, split a couple of defenders. Lanchas has also come alive in the second half, getting more opportunity down the left flank. He's got the ball there in the far corner, makes a nice move to the end line, centers it looking for Pearson, and Larkin comes out in traffic and grabs it. Scott Pearson and Jim Larkin become entangled. Launches with a nice cross into Pearson, and uh, like any good striker, he's going to get involved in, in, the, in anything where the ball is, and uh, he just goes and there's a little bit of collision with the goalkeeper. But the two of them kind of approach each other with that body language of, hey, nice hard play. Yeah, it was, it was a good play by, on both ends. One more look. Goalkeeper actually had it before. Pearson actually yeah. had a chance. So good, good instincts by Larkin, came up with it, prevented any kind of opportunity by the Eagles. He's looking for a chance. Kofi Say gets it ahead to John Moffitt. Moffitt to the top of the box, still with the ball, looks for Capilla, and Avery John comes up with it. Well, with about 16 minutes left, I'd have to say VCU is basically 
going to defend and try to kick, capture uh, AU on a counterattack if they want to score the third goal. I, won't, I wouldn't think we'd see too many uh, VCU players forward in these last uh, 15 minutes of the game. Kofi Say heads it ahead to Capilla. Capilla down the left. Double team and taking off the ball. Scott Weber. At midfield for Eric Block. And it'll be a VCU throw in. Moffitt, and now Kofi Say. And play continues. As we approach the 15 minute mark now. Yeah, the Americans definitely got to be a little. I have to put some uh, numbers forward a little bit more here, definitely in the last 15 minutes if they want to try to uh, get the tying goal. I think they'll turn it up even a little bit more here as we get down between the 15 and 10 minute mark. They'll have nothing to lose at that point. VCU just has to concentrate like they did for most of the game except for the one minute. Really playing solid defense, playing together, staying compact and uh, not giving anything to America. Avery John with some aggressive play at midfield to Fransky. Fransky has it knocked away by Trevor Spencer. And John Moffitt looked like he might have thrown a little bit of an elbow at Stephen Fransky. Yeah, I thought the foul would go the other way, yeah. but ref saw it differently. So the Ram midfield. Both of these teams, 15-3-3 coming in, and they played to a scoreless tie on this field back at the end of September. The numbers one and three seeds, American U number one and VCU number three, George Mason was the number two seed. No matter who wins this game for the first time since 1991, It'll be somebody other than James Madison or William and Mary. Those two schools have dominated really in the 90s. Old Dominion won in 1991, and since then it's been JMU and William and Mary. ECU again for the last couple minutes have put some passes together, have maintained possession of the ball. And they continue to do so. Look at the anxious VCU bench. John Moffitt had the first goal of the game way back about seven minutes into the contest. The players on the bench definitely excited, hoping to pull off their first uh, championship here in the CAA. Standing on the sidelines. Motto loses it, and here come the Eagles again. Well, Americans slowed down here in the last couple minutes with VCU having a little bit better of the play. They only have about 12 minutes left to try to get that tying goal. Yeah, that's a good point. At the start of the second half, they expended a lot of energy on goal. Got the one, but now they seem to have uh, slowed a little bit. Give VCU's defense some credit for that also. But here comes Scott Pearson. In on goal, opportunity, and Larkin kicks it out of there as Scott Weber had a chance. And Larkin punches it out of there back towards midfield where Capilla comes up with it. Larkin coming up great. Very big here. Uh, two consecutive chances that American had. Weber was through on one-on-one -on -one and uh, saved the day for VCU. Two huge plays by Jim Larkin. Great chance right there for American, but Larkin comes up very big and uh, saves, makes a great save. Good work, good work, good work. Trevor Ellis and kicked out of there. Trevor Spencer, who's done a real good job. Good look at Jim Larkin, credited with eight saves today, none bigger than the one he made just a moment ago. He's had a couple of huge plays. As we said earlier, a very consistent goalkeeper, and he showed it here today. Wasn't much he could do on the first goal. Get the feeling he's going to have to come up big a couple more times before this thing is over. Yeah. If American has anything to say about it. A lot of time left. He needs to concentrate, keep his defense organized. Derek Roberts going to come back into the game for American. There he is. And 
Todd Miller coming out. Well, now, wait a minute. I don't know that they know anybody off the field. I think that's where the coaches are. For AU. And Tim O'Sullivan saying, hey, wait a minute. They've got too many players on the field, and Bob Jenkins out on the field as well. Well, there's a little bit of confusion going on here. And the two coaches are discussing it amongst themselves right at midfield. As Derek Roberts came into the game, nobody came out of the game. Referee didn't even notice. Nope. Somehow VCU gets the ball. Yeah. And they had stopped the clock while they tried to figure all that out. Now back up again, 10.45 to go. Two to one is the VCU lead. Hit him in, Tim O'Sullivan saying, hey, wait a minute, they're putting enough pressure on us at even strength. I want to give him an extra player. Good play by Kofi Say. Gets it out of there to Erwin LaCrom. LaCrom centering it for Capilla. Capilla heads it across looking for Moffitt, but Avery John gets back nicely to come up with it. Counterattack there by VCU. A couple players forward and trying to get something to try to possibly get a third goal because uh, I would have to think if they did get the third goal, it kind of end Americans' hopes. Yeah, absolutely. As we're down to 10 minutes to go now, you see our Kellogg scoreboard and uninterrupted commercial-free coverage of our CAA Men's Soccer Championship from Reeves Field at American U. It's been a good one, 2-1 to one, VCU. They jumped to that early 2-0 lead. The Eagles have been scratching and clawing and fighting back ever since. They've gotten halfway there. Come on, Come on, Very entertaining game, a lot of chances on both sides, even though VCU's only had two or three shots, they've scored on two of them, so opportunities they've had. Another chance for the Eagles, and again, the Rams are there. Spencer looking for Moffitt, but Scott Weber comes up with it. And now to Otero. Capilla loses it. Weber intercepts it. And the Rams get it to midfield. ECU definitely doesn't want to lose the ball there. As we saw, the Americans first goal losing it in the center of the field is a very dangerous thing. And we almost saw that there with Capilla giving up the ball. And now every possession will become even more critical as we're under nine minutes to go. Brennan for AU and Avery John. Those two guys have set things up most of the afternoon, particularly John. Yeah, he's very good on the ball, a very skilled player, and he showed that today. Another opportunity, but Roberts can't get the header, but it comes back to Fransky. Everybody practically back now for VCU with eight minutes left. American needs to get the ball wide like this and get some crosses in. Ronchez does just that, but it's headed out of there by LaCrom. Back to Ellis. Ellis in on goal. There's a shark and makes the save, and it's kicked out of there. Larkin made the save, but left the rebound right out in front. Larkin in the right place right there. The ball fired right at him. Makes a great save. American's going to get a corner kick here. As you see here on the replay, American's going to have a shot very close. Great save by Larkin. Now here comes the corner kick. Another one for American. Center towards the middle of the box. And the Eagles will keep possession and keep pressure on. Capilla battles with Roberts. And Spencer to midfield to Avery John. Jim Angelucci, or Jeff Angelucci, the AU goalkeeper, is almost all the way to, well, halfway to midfield now for AU. In case the ball comes that way, he Able to get it back up and keep some of that clock. Here comes another chance for the Eagles, but again, it's kicked out of there. BC did, doing a great job just defending in any way they can, bringing everybody back practically, except for Capilla. 
but they'll try to get the, when they do get the ball, trying to knock the ball off to him so he can hold on to it, give them some break, give him a break, give him a rest. Now well, Jim Larkin now will have a chance of his own to kick it out of there and maybe get a quick breather before the Eagles come back again. Now we had said he'd have to come up with another big save, at least one, he's come up with one. Still some time left, so. Mm -hmm. And he does get it to midfield. Spencer keeps it there. And now on Hell Lanchus on the far side. Centers it for Weber. Weber loses it. John Moffitt has it. He's got Capia in the middle of the field. A motto. And back to Avery John. Not too many people getting forward from VCU. They just carry the ball into the Americans end and try to waste some time. Six minutes to go. Fransky, middle of the field for Roberts, turns, top of the box, makes his move and scores! Great move by Derek Roberts for the game tying goal. Great shot by Roberts. Great finish and American players are extremely happy. Just under six minutes to go. American U has come back and tied it. The comeback kids are making another comeback. Well, here we see on the replay, the ball's played into Roberts. He just turns, takes a couple touches on the ball, dribbles it, and hits a great shot, the corner of net. And there's really no, no chance for Larkin on that one. Strikes it perfectly right into the corner. And all of a sudden, the game is tied up 2-2. Derek Roberts with his ninth goal of the year. 21 points. And he's been a thorn in VCU side. He had the game-winning goal against the Rams last year. Well, as we talked, Americans are uh, very familiar with the situation that they were in, down two goals, and uh, they didn't panic. They didn't, they didn't uh, get too impatient, and uh, they took their time and uh, just got the two goals that they needed. VCU's going to have to go on the offensive, which they haven't done almost the entire game. And now there's five and a half minutes to go in a 2-2 game. Well, yeah, I think you definitely see some more VCU players in the Americans uh, part of the field and uh, get a ball. So and Avery John pushed from behind. And the Eagles now could smell victory. Here we have another replay here on the... Uh, on the foul, which is a push from behind, and uh, the ref saw it the whole way. So we'll see if the Eagles can continue to apply the pressure with five minutes to go in regulation. Eric Block will throw it in. Trevor Ellis crosses it for Brennan. Weber. Tries to center it. And a motto for VCU. America's still putting a lot of pressure on VCU to try to get that, that winning goal. They have, to, they have to be careful not to try to send too many people forward. Get caught on the counter, as we saw a couple times in the second half by VCU. The Rams hoping for just one more opportunity. Pia charges in, but can't come up with it. Scott Pearson looks to make a move. Looking for Roberts, the pass behind him. And now the Rams to midfield with four minutes remaining. It's probably a pretty tough situation for uh, VCU. They haven't attacked all game and haven't had too many numbers forward. All of a sudden, now the game's 2-2. They need to try to get forward, so they're not used to doing that at all during the game. It's a hard situation for them. Mm -hmm. 3.30 to go in regulation, tied at 2-2. The home crowd urging the Eagles for one more goal. Can 
still possessing the ball, having a lot of the ball still, knocking around, trying to get it out to their flank players to get some crosses. In. Now VCU looking for an opportunity. Moffitt on the far sideline. Make a move. Towards the end line. VCU being a little bit dangerous, getting some players down there. Moffitt making a good run. He forces a corner kick here for VCU, which is a very dangerous play for American. And uh, I'm sure VCU is hoping that they can uh, get that third goal. Kofi Say heading over there to take the corner kick, which is just the for the Rams, seven of them for American. Shot was black. Here's Say's corner kick along the ground. To Twan, lost it. And the Eagles will come back the other way with two minutes to go in regulation, tied at 2-2. Jeff Angelucci will boot it up field. Has been uh, a quiet guy in the second half. Field and back come the Rams. Kofi says you on a counterattack. Nice ball to Kapia. Kapia down the left side. Avery John right there with him. Kapia tries to center, but no one home. Kofi say in front of his own bench. Into Kapia. And they surround him immediately. Scott Pearson all the way back playing defense. Forward for American. And he knows that he needs to come back and help out. His American teammates. Good move by Mock in the final minute of regulation. Derek Roberts with the game tying goal with six minutes to go in regulation for American. come to midfield. Good play by Tony Waugh. Amato can't catch up with it at the fence. Well, both teams playing very well right now defensively, not letting either team have too much of an opportunity. And we're 20 seconds away from overtime. Eagles may get one more opportunity here with 10 seconds to go. They're gonna hurry, have to hurry up. There's nine seconds left. But they will stop the clock with three, with uh, four seconds for an injured player, Antonio Otero. So the Eagles will get one kick. Definitely a foul. Uh, no, number nine not getting the ball at all for VCU and uh, American with an opportunity here with four seconds left. There's the shot on and wide. So regulation ends at 2-2 and Jim who was so brilliant for most of this game was virtually helpless on Derek Roberts' tying goal that sends us to OT, tied at 2-2 in the CAA Men's Soccer Championship. Back with you at American U. More soccer action as we go to overtime in the AA Men's Championship. VCU and AU tied at 2-2. How did we get to overtime? Well, our Kellogg's play of the game. That's how Richie Williams, Derek Roberts, right now the hero for the Eagles. Yeah, Derek with a great strike of the ball here. Knocks it right into the corner net and ties the game up for American. Uh, they have to be real happy with that play right now. One more look at Roberts with good footwork. He just has and a great, drills it. great turn. He gets a little bit pressure, boards off the defender, and uh, knocks a great ball into the net. Derek Roberts, the six foot junior out of Trinidad. And as you can see, the American teammates are very happy. 
Now, here's what we got coming up. Two 15-minute periods. They'll play them both, no sudden death. And then if they're still tied at the end of that 30 minutes, we'll play two 15-minute periods with sudden death in effect. And after that, we'll go to penalty kicks. So you got a chance for a lot more. Could be a lot, so lot more soccer being played here. Another hour and hour plus. The Rams huddling to the left. American already out in position to the right as we get set to start the overtime. And I would think, Richie, that the overtime right now favors American as, as aggressive as they were in the second half. They, they would seem to have the momentum. I would definitely agree with you. Um, they had most of the uh, play in the second half. Uh, BCU defended well. They had the one mistake and then uh, just the great individual e effort by Derek Roberts to t tie the game up. So I'd have to say it's in their favor, uh, and especially playing at home. They have probably, uh, they feel a little bit better about it too. So here we go. The first of the two 15-minute periods is underway, and American U off of the kick has the ball. <laughs> We'll see if they continue to apply just as much pressure as they did in that second five minutes to tie this thing up. Where one goal could win it now, it can't officially win it because it is not sudden death through these two 15-minute periods. I would have to think VCU is going to come out and play more, to, more like they did at the beginning of the game. opportunity with a left foot kick. There's four or five American players in the 18 and uh, just bounced to Weber and he had a good smack of the ball, but for him it was unlucky that it went a little bit high. Here's another look. The ball's actually deflected, I think, to begin with. Comes right back to him and he hits a left footed shot just a little bit over the top. So the Eagles indeed continue to apply some pressure at the start of the overtime. Who wants the ball? Fransky. And now Trevor Ellis. Bob Brennan back on the near side. Weber, who's been all around that goal. He's had a lot of opportunities to score today. American coming out like they did earlier in the game. A lot of possession. BCU dropped off a little bit. John leaves it ahead for Fransky on the far side. Now to Otero down the right flank. And the Eagles will have a throw in. And another one. That's Trevor Ellis. Looking to make a centering pass. And knocked away. There's in front on Helanchis. Centers it. Shot. Larkin comes back to make the play. Pearson being dangerous again, getting in the eighth in the box there and uh, crossing the ball. And uh, I believe that was Lanchas with the with the header. Dangerous player knows for the Gets the ball across, and Lanchez has a header that Larkin picks up nicely. As he had to come back from the other side of the net. So again, AU continues to apply the pressure. VCU has had almost no offense at all. They do have the two goals in the first half on quick strikes. There's Bob Brandon on the near sideline. through a double team. Lanch has shown some skills there. Getting through three players. He's a little bit upset that uh, he was kicked on the play. But it will be a kick for AU. Showing some skills and some body work there. Getting around some players and finally was fouled by the BCU player. Ends up kicking him back. Wasn't very happy with it. John. There's the foul story, lower left. 
21 on VCU and 18 on American now. Both, both teams very aggressive, very physical teams. And it showed that through the fouls. Larkin leaps up to grab that one in traffic. Take another look. Trevor Ellis with the centering pass. Yeah, Trevor just throwing the to the box. Larkin coming up big with the save. Just trying to get the ball in there for an opportunity for AU. The Rams trying to muster some sort of offensive attack, but haven't been able to. BCU hasn't shown much of an attack here no. in the second half or the overtime. A couple counterattacks that they didn't really get any shots off, so if they don't want to go to penalty kicks, they're going to have to make a better effort to try to get some players forward to be a little bit more offensive. Derek Roberts back to Stephen Fransky, and now to Roberts, who has the game-tying goal. In the middle of the field now for Scott Pearson. Can't make a move. Played five minutes of the first overtime period. Ball in the middle of the field again as Pearson was awaiting it and never got to it. The Rams trying to make a charge. BCU definitely going with the counterattacks. Amato centers it, but nobody there. And on the far side, Angelucci comes out. Kicks it out onto the sideline. Good play. And up for Eric Block. And Weber misfires. But Pearson comes back to make a pretty good play. And here come the Eagles. Otero at midfield looking for Derek Roberts. Can't get to it. Game's really opening up now. A lot of space out there. Players must be getting tired here in the overtime. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of space to play. Brennan back defensively. And now Otero. Stephen Fransky looking right side. Can't get anything done. Foul on the VCU player. American will have a free kick. With eight and a half minutes to go in the first of two 15 minute overtime periods. will be Fransky with the kick along the turf. And now Capilla looks to make a run against Avery John. And John does a good job. Capilla really the only person forward for VCU, mostly everybody else back. So when he does get the ball, he doesn't have much of an opportunity to do anything with it because he has no support. Um, that's one of the problems VCU is going to have if they you know, if they tend to try to score a goal. Angel launches with a nice athletic move. Going downfield. Can't come up with it. Amato for VCU. Loses it. Pearson tripped up by Amato. VCU defender trying to make some passes and uh, weren't very successful on that. And American uh, was able to pick off a pass and uh, they get a foul. And this is a dangerous situation. Scott Weber will approach the ball. Just steals the ball from the player. Out, the intern fouls him. Here comes Weber with the kick. Centers it. On goal and cleared out. Down to 7.20 to go in the first overtime. Tied at 2-2, VCU scored two first half goals, American two second half goals. All of the pressure has been by the Eagles. And they're looking to apply some more. Come on. Yeah, it really is. Kicking the going on. Both 
team's very competitive and want this championship badly. BCU with the throw in. Moffitt back to midfield to Bergeron. BCU actually coming alive a little bit here. Some passes together, getting in the Americans and a little bit more than they had earlier on. Brennan with the interception to Pearson. Out of Otero. Looks to find an opening. Can't do so. Out of the play in the middle of the field. In the last couple minutes, nobody having really any clear cut chances on goal. And play stays right there at midfield. Players must be a little bit tired, not, not being as attack oriented as they were earlier in the game, especially American. Capilla with three players around him. He got crushed and uh, holds his right knee. But here come the Rams. Moffitt in on goal. Moffitt actually with a pretty good opportunity right there. Missing the shot on goal and it was an easy uh, save for the goalkeeper. What's that a save? Uh, probably only three yeah. saves the whole game. Yeah. Under five minutes to go in the first overtime. Fransky. Ahead for Otero. Down the right flank. The centering pass is headed out. 